Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture. Uh, today I will be taking up a question based on finding domain for a particular function. This is an interesting function because it's a logarithmic function. Number one. Number two, the question consists of modulus as well as the greatest integer function. So our logic should be very much clear about modulus function as well as the greatest integer function. So if this bracket denotes the greatest integer function, then the domain of the real valued function log base the greatest integer function x plus half of modulus x square minus x minus 2 is. And these are your options. Close 3 by 2 to infinity. Close 3 by 2 to 2. Union open 2 to infinity, half to 2, open union 2 to infinity, open at 2, none of these. So we need to be very clear in our head about the things that we have to make use of. We have to make use of the facts associated to the greatest integer function. Greatest integer function x means what comes outside is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to this x, okay? About modulus of x, we know that whatever is inside the modulus comes outside as it is. In case that uh, value is greater than or equal to zero, and minus of it comes out if it is less than zero. Okay. Now, what about log? The facts that we know about log is that domain, the natural domain of log is, is positive real numbers. So x needs to be, if it is log x, then x needs to be strictly greater than zero, right? It can't even be equal to zero. So these are the facts that we will be using in here. First thing I'm going to, uh, you know, talk about the base. The conditions for base, there are two conditions that the base would need to satisfy. The base has to be strictly greater than zero. And secondly, it cannot be equal to one. The thing about logarithm is that uh, whatever uh, you are taking the logarithm of, that thing has to be strictly greater than zero, right? So which means that our modulus x square minus x minus 2 has to be strictly greater than 0. Now, this is a modulus value. Whatever comes out is positive. It could be equal to 0 as well. We don't want equal to 0. So, this basically leaves us with the option that x square minus x minus 2. Positive it is, but it should not be equal to 0. So that's the condition that we will be working on. Now the base is greatest integer. Greatest integer x plus half. This should be strictly greater than 0. And the second thing is that greatest integer x plus half should not be equal to 1. Now, greatest integer x plus half is strictly greater than 0. That means it could be 1, it could be 2. Whatever comes out is an integer. Okay, so whatever comes out is an integer. What comes out is, could be 1, 2 or more than that. It has to be strictly greater than 0, right? So what does that tell us about whatever is inside? What is inside? Oh, x plus half. So what does it tell you about x plus half? This means that x plus half should be strict, greater than or equal to 1. In case x plus half will be greater than or equal to 1, that means either 1 would come out. If it would be, say, you know, 2, 2.5, then 2 would, you know, come out, then 3 could come out. But whatsoever more than zero, strictly more than zero would come out, right? So that means from here I get that x has to be greater than or equal to half. 
Let's keep this con condition aside. We have more conditions to work with, right? So the next one about the base itself is the, that the greatest integer x plus half should not be equal to one. If it is not equal to one, that means it could be uh, lesser than one or more than one, but it should not be equal to one, right? So that means whatever is inside for that matter, x plus half, it could be, see, x plus half should not be one point something because if it will be one point something, if x plus half is one point something, then one would come out as the greatest integer value, right? So it should not be one point something. So that means either it is lesser than one or it is more than or equal to two. Because if it is more than or equal to two, then two would come out. One would not come out, right? So that means whatever is inside this bracket x plus half could be either lesser than one. When it would be lesser than one, then one would not come out of the greatest integer bracket or it could be more than or equal to two. So that means x could be lesser than half or more than three by two. Now, if you combine the two conditions that you have here, so one condition is this, that it has to be greater than or equal to half. One condition is that it is between, um, uh, it is lesser than, uh, it is lesser than half or, or more than three by two. So that means when you combine the two, it is more than three by two is the common part, right? So what you get from here is that it is x is definitely greater than or equal to 3 by 2. That's what you will get by combining a and b. Well, this is one condition that we get. But we're not done yet. We have to move on to the other condition, which deals with log of something. So that log of something cannot be equal to zero. That something cannot be equal to zero. So let's work on this one. x square minus x minus two is not equal to zero in case x, x square minus two x plus x minus two is not equal to zero. I'm just factorizing it as you can see. So it's x into x minus one plus one into x minus two. So you get two factors that x plus one, x minus two should not be equal to zero. That means clearly we are getting that x should not be equal to minus one or two. Well, well, now you have to combine the conditions. So we have one condition where x is greater than or equal to three by two and another condition this. Combining the two, what will you get? Now, if x is greater than or equal to 3 by 2, of course, it's not equal to minus 1. We will be avoiding that value. But it, we are just getting that it should not even be equal to 2. So that means x could belong to, it should start from 3 by 2, but it cannot go, it, it, it can't, you can't include 2. So you will have to avoid 2. But there's a restriction beyond it. So it's just that you should be excluding 2. Apart from that, everything above 3 by 2, including 3 by 2, would be a part of it. So x belongs to close 3 by 2 to 2, open union 2 to infinity. Again, open at 2. It's just that 2 would not be included because that's the condition that we are getting. And this is what is your domain. Domain is just the value of x that you can take as an input. So do we have an option which gives me the same thing? Yes, we do. Option B it is. And option B should be the correct answer.